I don't know about you, uh, but I'm a dopamine addict. And if you listen to this podcast, you know I'm a dopamine addict. You know I like cars. I like to spend money. I like food. And you know, I'm I'm 34 years sober, so drugs and alcohol are not quite my thing. But I still look for things to make me feel better and to distract me. Uh, one of the things that we don't talk about uh, in the world is porn. Is the is the things that we can do in private that don't seem to be making that much damage in our lives, but you know, we we actually we actually just don't know what what it what is doing to us now this conversation that i'm going to have with my next guest is nothing about judgment i have no judgments uh about porn i have no judgments about porn stars i have no judgment about the act i have no judgment about sex uh what i want to talk about is what works what doesn't work what's distracting us from what is really important to us and what might be hurting us that society thinks is okay and normal uh and it just might not be good uh, good for us uh, so I've been following my next guest for years. He started out as, you know, just a cool kid who was talking about quitting porn, talking about the effects of porn on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And he just had a really interesting take on the whole thing. And he was and I was watching him heal on his own. We had him on um, the Mastering Midlife podcast years ago, and he had did such a good job. And I got so many messages uh, uh, from the people that he helped. Fast forward a few years and I'm reading his newsletter. I'm reading his content and it's just matured. It's gotten so much more useful. The insights, the experience. Go, so like for me, you know, when I first became a coach, I had lots of training. I had lots of skills, but I didn't have the experience, you know, to talk about, you know, how this thing works. Uh, and uh, Devin McDermott, who's my guest, now has that experience, has that gravitas. And we're going to talk to him today. Officially, he's a porn addiction recovery and masculine growth coach who helps guys develop a healthier relationship with their sexuality in order to fix their marriages, their sex lives, dating, and ultimately become better men. With over four years of experience in one-on-one -on -one settings with 112 different clients, he's become one of the world's foremost experts in porn addiction. For Devin, this goes beyond just work. It's his mission and it's, and it's personal. After quitting porn and completely revolutionizing his life in the process, he felt called to share what he learned with others. And today that call is stronger than it's ever been. Devin, thanks for being on the show. Hey, thanks a lot for having me, Mark. Couldn't have said it better myself. You know, dude, I, again, you know, watching you, we, you know, we were talking before the microphone was on, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's like watching, watching my sons grow up before my eyes on Twitter, uh, you know, and, and the depth and breadth of what you've done with, you know, your, your little piece of healing the world really astounds me. I'm curious, uh, can you define the problem for us and then tell us a little bit about your story? Yeah, sure. So what I see happening in the world around us is exactly what you were talking about in the beginning. We have a society filled with dopamine addicts. And this is not necessarily always a bad thing. Our brains are programmed to seek dopamine for a reason. And typically those things have meant survival. Food, shelter, water, sex, community. These things all release dopamine and they're a good thing. But in the modern world, we have access to so much dopamine that is just a finger's click away that just overstimulates our brains and has unintended consequences. And not all of these sources of dopamine are equal. Probably the very worst of them would be hard drugs. Methamphetamine, cocaine, heroin, that kind of thing is the absolute worst. But most people aren't doing that. Something that most people are doing is using porn. And sex releases the most dopamine that we are possibly capable of experiencing without using hard drugs. Now they talk about porn being accessible, accessible, available, and anonymous <laughs> is why it's so easy. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly accessible. And it, because it is taking advantage of our biological drive to reproduce, which is our body's highest priorities, really everything that we do on some level is for that purpose. Uh, it, releases a massive amount of dopamine and is heavily reinforced whenever we do it. 
which makes porn incredibly, incredibly addictive. Mm -hmm. And there are huge unintended consequences in people's lives because of that, which is something that, of course, as you alluded to, I have a lot of personal experience with because... Oh, so, so tell us your origin story. Yeah, I, I was just like most other kids who gained access to the internet around 12 years old and soon thereafter found images of topless girls and whatever else, whatever basic stuff was on there. And then over the years to come, it evolved. It quickly became something that I was doing every single day, sometimes a couple times per day, but usually not. I wasn't going too crazy. Sometimes I do hear stories of guys who are doing this stuff for six hours a day or something. I was I was never that guy. And I want to be clear about that because I think it's it's relevant. Most guys Very are not so. using it for six hours a day and you don't need to be. 20 minutes a day is enough to cause a lot of damage. So that's about what I was doing. And I had no idea that what I was doing was addictive or that it was hurting me for more than 10 years. So you fast forward into my early 20s. And for context, I'm now 29 years old, turning 30 soon. In my early 20s, I still had no idea that I was actually struggling with an addiction. But I had started to get a clue because I was starting to notice that my motivation, my mental clarity were not as high as I thought they should be. I was making goals and I had ambitions, but I was having a hard time acting on those things consistently, whether it was a regular exercise routine or getting more work done, being more productive, making more money. I was just really struggling with that kind of thing. And even worse than that was my dating life, where I just had absolutely no motivation at all. I remember the things that I was telling myself were like, oh, I don't even want to bother dating because porn is so much easier. It's so much work mm. to go and meet people and date people. And even when I did end up in the bedroom with someone, I had really bad porn-induced erectile dysfunction as well. And that was my wake-up call, as it is for so many guys. Because that, I'm, that I'm actually hearing it's an epidemic for guys in their late teens and early 20s like it, like this is actually a thing it's a huge thing it's affecting millions and millions of guys all around the world but as you said before it's silent nobody knows this stuff is happening in in bedrooms with doors closed nobody really knows and there's so much shame around the topic of pornography and there's even more shame around your manhood not working properly mm -hmm. So most people just are not talking about it, but it is a very big issue, which leads me to the present day where now I quit porn almost four years ago. I've been clean for a long time and I've completely changed my life as a result in every single way. My dating life, my sex life, I've been practicing Tantra and have an amazing, amazing deep connection with my partner. I've uh, completely transformed my body. I've built a successful business. I moved to Mexico. Things are going so much better for me. And I'm actually living the life that I envisioned for myself all those years ago. And quitting porn was one of the most major dominoes. So how, how, so, so let's slow you down. How did sure. you know the problem was the problem? Yeah, it was, it was because of a random video that I had seen from a website called yourbrainonporn.com where they talked about the damage that porn does to the brain, how it affects the dopamine reward center, the frontal cortex. Um, I know it's a little bit of a scientific term, the frontal right. cortex. Keep going. Controls, it controls your higher order thinking, your logical thinking, impulse control, your ability to say no. It's the part of the brain that makes us the most human and it like porn really negatively impacts that part of the brain. So it, it negatively affects all of your executive functioning. So one day I was smoking weed out in the garage. <laughs> um, and two minutes after I hit that bowl, I had it like an epiphany moment where I remembered this video that I had seen years ago that was talking about all this stuff, talking about the damage that porn does. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I went, 
oh my God, I think the reason my energy is so low, I wake up exhausted every day. I can't focus on my work. I can't motivate myself to do what I need to do. And my dick is not working right. I think it's all because of porn. And it was just a hunch at that time because of that video. But then I went mm. and I started digging, started doing research. It's one of the things I'm good at in life. And I backed up my my hunch and it just was solidified. I knew from there that that was the big issue. What's the first step you took when you figured that out after you did your research? I decided that it was my number one priority in life was to stop because from what I could tell, it was getting in the way of me doing literally everything that I wanted to do in my I would, life. Why was it getting in the way? So look, this is, this is the fascinating part for me. So it's 20 minutes a day. Uh, it's not a big deal. Why is it getting in the way of other things in life? Hmm, that's a great question. It's because there are consequences that endure long after the act itself when your brain is being damaged by it, when your dopamine reward center is being downregulated, uh, when that frontal cortex, the part of your brain that controls self-control and all of that is, is being negatively impacted. Those are consequences that stick with you every moment of your life, not just while you're using the device. So, so, 20, so 20 minutes, so 20 minutes, right? You, you're, you're done, you're good, you go off about your day, and you have no idea that you've just brought all this baggage to the work project you have to do, to the date you're going to go on, like, because it's, you know, it was 20 minutes of behind closed doors. I'm good. I felt, I feel fine. And you have no idea that it just dulled you in so many ways. Yeah. And, and part of what's insidious about it is that the reality is that after one time, you haven't dulled yourself all that much, but it has a cumulative effect that is slow and stealthy that builds up over time. So when I was 15 years old and I had been doing this stuff every day, you bet your ass it was affecting me, but it wasn't crushing my soul like it was in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. right? the, the cumulative effect stacks up oh, over the years and it becomes worse and worse. That chills. So, so, how, so uh, again, so what was the, so now you decided it's your number one goal in life. And uh, you know, I, I, read about, I read about your, uh, your evolution, but what, so what's the first thing you did? What'd you do to stop? Yeah, the first thing I did was try and use things like web blockers and um, just telling myself that I was going to stop. I think that's what most people do to begin with. They just go, all right, here we go. I'm stopping. Uh, we we call this the willpower approach. <laughs> I, do I do this every day with lunch. Yes. <laughs> with, with lunch. Here we go. I'm going to have a shake. I'm going to have a shake for breakfast. I'm going to have a shake for lunch and eat what I want for dinner. And then lunch comes around. I'm like, I don't want to shake. <laughs> and then you, you muscle through it anyways. Uh, some days, some days. And we're, some we're, days. we're working on that right now. Go on. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is the problem with using just willpower for porn as well as that it's famously flimsy and sometimes willpower gets fatigued maybe you're not in the best state maybe you're tired maybe you're a little bit stressed at which point willpower stops working nearly as well so mm -hmm. as i'm sure you can pick up on from what i'm saying so far it was not working very well for me i was anticipating that so what else did you try that didn't work? Web blockers were one of the biggest things. Um, just journaling about whatever was on my mind maybe helped a, a little bit. But journaling is not that useful if we're not really directed in how we're, in, in how we're using it. Uh, so I later learned how to use a journal much more effectively. But when I was just kind of putting whatever on the paper, it wasn't wasn't helping all that much. Uh, I tried using friends for accountability. Uh, I tried using other people who were also struggling with the same issue for accountability. And that helped a little bit. But what I found was that a lot of them weren't as committed to the problem as I was. And maybe they didn't know how to help with it because they were actually still struggling with it too. Uh, so 
those were all measures that really didn't help me all that much. But I was never going to give up, right? So I was sleuthing all over the internet, forums, Reddit, YouTube videos. I was just trying to find as much as I possibly could about how to stop. And, and over time, I started to find more of the strategies that actually helped me. So what started to work? What 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 started to help? Yeah, there there are a few different primary things. Uh, number one was learning how to overcome the urges. When that moment comes and you're you're in that moment of decision where you're at the fork in the road and either you're going to go and do the thing that you said you're not going to do anymore that's going to make you feel crappy or you're going to make the right choice. Uh, learning how to control that moment and consistently pull my attention back onto the right track whenever it started to wander down mm. the wrong pathway was one of the most important things. So what's the difference between that and willpower? This is more of a strategy. And if anyone out there is familiar with cognitive behavioral therapy, that is essentially what I started to apply to myself is changing the way that my brain thinks, changing the way that I respond to those cues. So if an urge hits, my response is not, no, I'm not going to do that. No, I'm not fighting it. I just recognize what's happening and gently direct my my attention in a different direction. Mm, there's a Michael Singer talks about relaxing and surrendering, you know, in, in, you know, into things, 12 step programs talk about not white knuckling it, but surrendering, uh, you know, into, in, you know, from in that addiction. And that's what I hear you describing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's, that's a good point. This is not a, a brand new concept. Maybe the way that I discovered it or the way that I describe it is a little bit different, but yeah, this is something that's been around for a long time. I think of it kind of like uh, like a stream. Like we have a, a stream of consciousness. We have a, a stream of our attention. And sometimes something might pop up. And if porn is not the issue, lots of things can pop up. Maybe it's cigarettes and you're trying to stop cigarettes. Maybe it's alcohol and you're trying to cut down on that. Maybe it's YouTube videos. No, yeah, no, they, like it, the list goes on and on and on, right? It doesn't matter for me whether I eat or scroll Instagram or buy something, right? Like they, they all, it all helps <laughs> when I want to feel something different than what I'm feeling, right? So, so I, 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 I just see this as a, as a universal thing. And I, I see the porn thing is just a, a, an insidious crack that, that, uh, that is um, even harder. Yeah, and I just wanted to to bring that up because this is a conversation that's just relevant to life in the modern world. I know we're talking about it in the context of porn because it's what I specialize in and it is one of the most harmful things, but this is just part of the nature of our modern world. Uh, we have lots of temptations popping up all the time. And when something does, I imagine it like a stream that's encountering a big rock in the way. Hmm. I just allow my attention to flow around it. I don't like latch on to the rock. I don't look at it and go like, wow, that's a really nice rock. Let me get a little bit closer. Uh, no, I recognize that there was a rock there and I choose to direct my attention around it into something else. Mm. And, mm. and it's just that simple. And if you've ever quit cigarettes or alcohol or, or anything like this, then you know that a lot of the time that's, that's all it is. You just keep your mind busy. You just put your mind into a different place and the urge, the craving starts to dissipate. Mm. So that was one of the most important things for me. And so when, how, so that was, did, did you, did you learn that through a group? Did you learn that? Like, did you, did you, you know, where, where did this come from? And then how did you further refine this? Cause you have a whole program. Like you, you now it's no longer just going around the rock in the stream like you have set up <laughs> uh just a brilliant uh program for people to actually come through this so i'm, I'm looking for um i'm interested in more of what you, what you've discovered 
Yeah, yeah, and you've been reading as I as I talk about it to my newsletter subscribers and all that. Uh, it has become a very robust, well-rounded system. Um, to answer your first question of where did that come from? How did it get refined? I think that it started with my meditation practice, which is one of the most useful skills you could implement into your into your life if you're trying to quit anything at all. Um, the meditation practice is basically what I just described. You have thoughts pop up, you recognize it, and then you just return your attention to your breath and just keep going. So I think at its very earliest stages, that is where this strategy came from. Uh, and then I started trying to interrupt the pattern by doing some things that were a little bit more intrusive, like doing some push-ups or going for a walk or going to get a snack or or making a journal entry every time I had an urge, every time I had like sexual thoughts, right? But what I found was that those were difficult to do numerous times every day. I would fatigue from it. I would get tired of making journal entries or doing fucking push-ups. Right. So I, I needed something that was a little bit more lightweight. And also for my clients as well, I noticed the same thing. Back in the early days of coaching people, I, I noticed that they were also fatiguing mm -hmm. on, on doing these journal entries or whatever throughout the day. So I was like, I know I, I knew I needed to create something that was a little bit more lightweight, easy for people to do as many times per day as they need to. And that is where that strategy was born from. I was like, huh, maybe, maybe we only need to use the journal if it's actually like a really difficult situation. But most of the time, it's just a little feeling that we can just respond to in 10 seconds and then and then move on with our day. So that's where that came from. Regarding the rest of the program, I'll just give you like a high level overview. Yeah, of what bit, we do. I'd love to out here because I, I, I want to fill you. I want to fill your program from all my anonymous listeners today. Awesome. I know you awesome. just, I just know you just closed a program. So by the time this airs, hopefully you'll be looking to fill another one. Yes. Yes. As you saw, enrollments are closed for the time being. Uh, I only am accepting at the moment, four guys per month. And once those spots are filled, then I just close the doors and focus on my existing clients for a little while. That said, I will have some spots opening up soon enough. And I have a new program that'll be launching. You're the first one in public to hear about it. Uh, so there is something that will be new and a lot more accessible for people as well coming soon. But I digress. A high level overview of what we do is number one, showing people how to manage those urges as I was just talking about. I won't rehash it all, but understanding how to pull yourself back onto the right track whenever you start to move down the early stages of the wrong track that's really critical. And just as a point of clarification, just like Mark, I really don't have any judgments about this stuff. When I say wrong, it's not a moral or an ethical thing. You know, it's so clear. You and I have not uh, like once touched on moral judgment in any way, shape or form in this whole conversation, which I was kind of marveling at silently is that we are, we're, we're both so humble and so clear that we just want to help people do what works. Yeah, it's not it's not a like a moral and ethical question for me. It's a question of what I've decided is right for me, what you've decided is right for you. So when you've decided that this stuff is not right for you, anything that starts to take you down that road is the wrong road. Mm. So teaching people how to pull themselves back on track, teaching people how to manage their emotions in healthier ways too. Because what a lot of guys don't realize, the vast majority, is that they're actually using porn or cigarettes or alcohol or social media or YouTube as an emotional band-aid. So the emotional part of their brain has gotten into this pattern for many years where it knows when it's experiencing discomfort, which takes many forms, stress, sadness, loneliness, frustration, boredom, rejection, whatever it might be. When your brain is experiencing that discomfort, it knows that it can reach for the porn. It knows it can reach for the booze. 
And that's going to give you a little bit of a neurochemical kick and make it feel better. So we go in and we retrain the response to those emotions so that the automatic response is no longer to do something self-destructive in response to them, but instead it is to look at what's going on and go, huh, that's interesting. What am I feeling right now? And what can I do about it? What can I do to help it? And then those moments become opportunities to do something that actually helps you instead of setting yourself back further, which is part of how my life has gotten better and better and better is because I just started facing what was going on inside of me and in my life and asking, how can I make this better? Mm. When you do that over and over, it's no surprise that your life gets better. It probably it's a surprise to you or whoever's practicing it. It's no surprise kind of in general when we talk about it, but every mm -hmm. time my life got better, I was like, huh, didn't know this existed. <laughs> I only, knew, <laughs> I only knew the reality I lived in. And then when I let go of something, I'm like, oh, so this is what liking myself is like. <laughs> yeah. And that's a fair point. It's no surprise intellectually, but when you're in the trenches of your own life day to day, it's, it's sometimes a little hard to see out of the trench and see what's over on the other side once you've made a change. Yeah, for, for you, because know, for me, every, everything, everything you're talking about is so grounded in ancient wisdom, in modern psych. Like you're just so grounded in all the things that work uh, in your program. You know, I, I'm, I'm really impressed. And the, and the, the limit is it's limitless because, you know, you know, we're, we're talking about age. I've been, I've been doing this self-help thing for decades and my level of surrender into what you're talking about has been endless. Like, and, and there's another level I'm in the middle of now of, of like, and I never knew what was available to me at each level. And I've, at each level, I'm like, Oh my God, like life can be like this. Like I, I've already have a great life. Now I used to have a miserable life. Then I had an okay life. Then I had a great life, you know, and now they're like, there's even more levels of freedom. What you're talking about is this, this porn thing for me, any addiction, anything that's acute to me is a spiritual device. It's a thing. It's a catalyst that can push you because it's so not working it pushes you into the thing that's going to work. I think a lot of people who don't have these really acute problems settle for, because there's not something to, there's not a catalyst, settle for uh, what they have. And I think addicts and people who have hit some sort of bottom just have such an opportunity for this growth, like, and, you know, you being a prime example. Yeah, they, they do. And it's proven in the neuroscience as well, that when someone has had an active addiction and they've overcome it, they become more disciplined. They become stronger because the frontal cortex, which I referred to earlier, gets a serious workout when you're working on overcoming an addiction and then it gets stronger and it stays stronger going forward. You just and so nowadays when people... People look at the way I live my life and frequently people are like, wow, you're so disciplined. And I don't know, it just it's just what happened as a result of my process of growth and, and overcoming what I had to. Right. It was a cat. It was a catapult. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. I was on, so, so if you're only uh, if you're only taking four people a month, uh, what kind of what, you know, and someone and let's say someone listening is, is uh, identifying with this. Where can they get help? Yeah, the best. Do you, have, do you have online programs or anything like that? The best place to go would be to my newsletter, where you'll start hearing from me on a regular basis. So first of all, if you're struggling with anything, this is a daily problem. And on my newsletter, I'm writing to my subscribers every day. So you'll have reminders and insights You'll learn more just from reading my newsletter. And my newsletter is the only place where I open up spots for people to book calls with me and to join into the program as well. 
So that would be the best place to go. The website is freeforgood.co. Pretty simple. Freeforgood.co. We'll put that. We'll put that in the show notes. Uh, and then following you on Twitter also is is a is a is a great thing to do because that's where I found you. Uh, but your newsletter, like I said, it, uh, if you're listening, subscribe to Devin's newsletter because it's not just chock full of um, really grounded wisdom on quitting porn. It's chock full of grounded wisdom. Period. Uh, and I and I don't say that lightly. I I don't li- I don't actually read most newsletters, and I'm always interested in what Devin has to share with people. Uh, so you'll get a lot out of it. So yeah. I'm cur- so where do you want to take this? Where do you you know like you're you're doing you're you're helping your one on one people. You're working you're working through this. Where do you see your practice going? Yeah, my my goal is actually to build a serious community filled with guys who are working on fixing this and working on becoming the best version of of themselves that they can. So that's where my mind is at at the moment. That's what I'm working on on the back end is is starting a community. Um, Yeah, that that pretty much sums it up. It's not not super complicated. If you... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say one of the, one of the things I love about you again is is kind of your the way you're easing into what you're building. Right? There isn't there is there isn't like a hustle to the whole thing. It's an it's an unfolding. Uh and mm. it's, and it's been real it's been really nice it's been really nice to watch. So. Yeah, and I, I think that is a testament to my character as a person as well where it's my life has never really been about hustling super hard or like pushing super hard, super fast, whatever. Uh, I'm more, my life has been more of an intuitive unfolding, as you said. And so it's no surprise that, that my business and the way that I help people has kind of taken that same approach. Um, okay. no. My friend, my friend, Jeff Spencer, uh, who is the coach to, uh, uh, Richard Branson and you two and other luminaries, he says it's answering cor- answering callings versus uh, chasing goals. That's exactly it. Yeah, this it goes so far beyond money for me. It's as as you said in the beginning, I, I, I felt a calling to work on this and I still feel that calling more than ever, actually. Um, so there, there's an idea that I've been holding here that I wanted to make sure to, to put out there as well. And it's the last piece of what we work on to help people actually quit this stuff. Nice. And that is improving people's lives. Looking for gaps in their habits and in their lifestyle where needs are going unfulfilled, goals are not being worked towards, Maybe this is in their intimate lives. Maybe it's with their wives. Maybe it's in their business. Maybe it's their health and their fitness. The point is that this is a, like porn is a form of escapism for people. Mm -hmm. And so we want to work on building a life that people are so happy in that they don't feel as much of a need for escapism. And for the... For the rising leaders out there, I think that this is particularly important as well, because if you're going to lead people, you really need to lead from the front. This is something that I believe in to my core, and it's why I'm the poster child for, for everything that I teach. And to tie it all together, this is one of the biggest reasons that porn is so harmful. Because if your brain is not functioning the way it should, because your dopamine reward center and your frontal cortex are being negatively impacted, then it's going to be a lot harder to motivate yourself, for you to stay consistent on your goals, for you to do the things that you know you should be doing if you are in alignment with your with your better self and with your vision for your future. And if you are struggling to align yourself with your own goals, then how are you going to lead people as effectively as you can? And I don't mean this as a call out, but really just as food for thought. We all need to be looking at ourselves and looking for where we can improve. I couldn't have said that any better. So I'm going to leave that there. That was really good. I was going to ask you, what didn't I ask? 
uh, that you want to say, and you, you brought it up so beautifully. Uh, so we talked about how to get in touch with you, Devin. I just appreciate what you do. I appreciate you being so candid on the, on the, on the podcast. Uh, we'll direct people to your newsletter, to your, to your website, and to your Twitter. So thank you for doing this. It's been my pleasure. Absolutely. You've, uh, you've been a great host. Great to be here. To all of you, uh, I re- you know I appreciate your listening, but more importantly, I appreciate your, your coming on the journey with me and willing to face the tough things to become the best people, the best leaders you can possibly be. I love you a ton. Have a great rest of the day.